Hi everyone, this is Wayne Dixon from CG Cookie here. Now in this time of Corona, everyone is trapped in their houses and you're probably really bored. So why don't we learn something? Today I'm gonna to teach you to do a bouncing ball with grease pencil and blender, which is all gonna be free. Now you might be wondering, oh I don't know how to draw anything in 2D, don't I need a graphics tablet? No, we're gonna throw that out and we're gonna use our mouse. So there's no excuses to not do this tutorial. Uh, it's free, as I said, and we're gonna have lots of fun. So let's get started. Just pick up that pen. It's, I need this. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is go to blender.org slash download and then download the latest version of Blender. The version I'm using in this is Blender 2.82a. All right, so here I am inside Blender 2.82a and we're ready to go. So here is the splash screen. If you wanted to start drawing, the easiest thing to do is just to choose the new file 2D animation layer, or you could go up here if your splash screen has disappeared and go file new 2D animation. And this will give you the layout where you can just start drawing in your screen here. But let me just undo that. Control Z and it'll turn on my screencast key so you guys can follow along. Now it's important to note that I'm using a right click select. So if I just bring up my preferences here and under the key map, by default it is left click select, but I prefer right click select. And my space bar, I've got it set to the tools, which uh, will be handy for when you're drawing with grease pencil to be able to switch all the tools. So you don't actually have to change the same settings as me, but these are just the settings that I use. But one thing that I would suggest that you change by default is this tab for pie menu, because this one I, I think should be the default setting uh, when you open up Blender. But um, yeah, this is the setting that I, I choose here, as well as the tilde key. That's a little squiggle in the top left of your keyboard. I changed that one to gizmo. So that's gonna help us out when, when we're drawing our grease pencil. All right, so let me close that and we're ready to start drawing. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit with my uh, middle mouse and scroll down. And you can see uh, with this layout, it's already given me an object to draw inside and this is called stroke. And we've got, uh, it's all just set up ready to go. So uh, what I'm going to do is jump out into object mode and add in a ground plane. I'm actually gonna use a cube for that. So this is where I hit tab and that's gonna bring up my menu and then I'm gonna to go to object mode. Now I'm going to sh hit shift A and add a mesh and I'm gonna choose a cube and that's gonna uh, position it there. And then I'm gonna just move it down a little bit. So I'm gonna hit G to move it down, constrain it to the Z axis by moving it in the downward direction and then uh, hitting the middle mouse. And then let's just take it to about there and jump into edit mode. And then with all of the vertices selected, so hit, make sure I hit uh, a to have them all selected. I'm gonna hit S and X and then scale. So my voice breaks and that uh, we get it to fill up the whole screen there. All right, so now we jump back into object mode. Now this by default is gonna look pretty white. So I'm gonna give it a material just to make it look a little bit um, easier on the eye. So I'm gonna click uh, over here, choose the materials panel and hit new. Now let's change our default base color. Let's just make this a little bit uh, grayer so we can distinguish it from our background. All right, so these are our two objects. This is our ground plane, uh, well ground cube really. I'm just gonna call this ground. And it's always a good thing to get in the habit of naming your object and the data. So I'm just gonna click here and name uh, the data as well. And while we're in this mode, I'm also gonna name our stroke. This is our grease pencil stroke where we're gonna do our ball animation. So I'm gonna call this ball. And then I'm also gonna name the data ball because that uh, is going to make it a little bit easier to understand. All right, so now I'm ready to start drawing our ball here, uh, but you'll notice I'm still in edit mode. So if I select here, I can't actually go to draw mode or start drawing. I need to jump back into object mode first, and then I can select whatever object that I want in uh, the, the outline here. So if, it, if you're in edit mode, it's gonna stick in edit mode. All right, so here we have our, um, our dope sheet for our grease pencil and you can see our layers. You can also find them over here in the data tab for uh, the degrees pencil layers. That's the same thing. We can choose our layers down here or up here. But let's just switch back to the materials for now. So I'm gonna draw. Um, we do that with draw mode. So we can change draw mode by um, having our grease pencil object selected, which we did up here, and then um, choosing draw. Or we can hit tab with that setting that I've changed in my user preferences and then choose draw. Now I can draw. Down here on the side, you can see all the tools. If you want the names of them, just um, hover your mouse a little bit closer to the edge until it changes um, 
uh, the, the cursor there and then you can drag it a little bit bigger and that might help you out if you're a new person to Grease Pencil and you don't know what all these tools are. So now we have the name, so that is good. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my uh, first frame of our ball. We are on frame one and I'm gonna draw it on the lines layer. So let's make sure that we're doing that. But before we even um, draw, I'm going to make sure that I'm changing my uh, pen, my the, the brush that I'm gonna use, from pencil over to pen, because we're gonna get this right first time. All right, so now I'm going to draw with the circle tool over here. Now you can click over here, or because I have the space bar set up to choose the tools here, I can just hit space bar and then choose whatever uh, tool that I want. So now I'm gonna draw my little circle here just by clicking and dragging. If you hold down shift, it's gonna constrain it to be a perfect circle. So that's good for me. Now it's uh, giving me some widgets here. We can move it around by hitting G and then um, repositioning it. And this top left widget will change the, um, the shape there and this bottom left widget will change the shape. And um, again, if you hold down shift when, when these are active, it's not actually gonna constrain it anymore. So let me just undo that. Control Z, actually I'll just escape it and do, and do it again. So let's just draw a little circle. That's kind of how big we want our ball. I want to kind of position it in the top middle, just gonna eyeball it for now, and, and we're good to go. Okay, so I'm ready to confirm this shape. So I'm gonna hit the Enter key, and now we have made that, we've committed that. It's actually a real stroke now. Okay, so let's uh, use another tool. We're gonna to use the Arc tool and give this ball some stripes. So I'm just gonna drag over here and here, and if we hold down the Shift, it's going to constrain it to a perfect, um, line so these these things are in line and now we're just going to drag this down just to give it a slight arc not too much but um yeah that's what we're going to do and we're not going to worry about going over the edges here because we're going to cut them off with another tool so i'm going to hit confirm and zoom in here so now it kind of looks like an eyeball but i'm going to jump into edit mode and then copy this stroke so i'm going to jump into edit mode you can see now uh, it looks a little bit different if I wanted to select the whole stroke, I can just um, make sure that this one up here is active. All right? If I wanted to select the individual points, I can just select them here. So it's probably easier just to leave it on the stroke. And now I have that all selected and I'm going to hit Shift D and then drag it down. So let's just go to about there. That kind of looks right. Actually, I'm gonna select both of these. I'm gonna um, uh, Shift select them and then just move them both down just a slight uh, it's like a little bit there. So there we go. And now I want to cut off these excess areas. So I'm going to jump back into draw mode by hitting tab, choosing draw. And we have a cool little tool to cut off these little daggy ends. It's called the cutter. So I'm just going to choose that and then go chop, 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 chop. Ta-da! Wasn't that easy. All right, now we're going to fill it in. So I'm going to jump back to, actually I was already in the draw mode. Let's change our tool to the fill. Now we drew that with our um, black material. I'm gonna choose a different material and use it to fill in our areas here. So I'm gonna go down to one of these other preset materials and I'm just gonna change this one. So at the moment it says red, I want this one to be orange. And now I can turn on or off the, the strokes. So I'm gonna turn off the stroke so it's not gonna be visible and turn on the fill. So here is where we set our color for that fill. And I'm just going to drag up our color shader here and then just choose uh, a nice orange, not too saturated, but there we go, something like that. Uh, and now uh, when I click in um, the top here, well actually, whoops, I don't wanna fill it in yet, I wanna do it on a different layer. So let me change the layers here and fill it in on the fills. So that way it's going behind the little black line there. So I'm gonna fill that and fill that. And now let's change our let's change our black dots. I'm going to move this up in the stack. I'm going to make this one a blue color. So we're going to do the same thing. Turn off our stroke. Turn on the fill, and then change the color. Drag this up to, all the way to the top. Choose a nice light pale blue. There we go. And now we're still on the fills layer. We're going to click in here. Ta-da! We have drawn our first frame of our ball. Now. I can combine these two layers because I'm, I'm happy with the way that it looks. So the way we do that, I'm gonna jump over to the data tab and then with this little um, arrow here, there is the merge down. Now I wanna make sure that uh, it's gonna merge the, top, the, the layer that I have selected with the one below it. So this is in the right order. So let's just choose that, merge down. And now I can uh, relabel this. I'm gonna call this character. 
So this is my character. I can turn him on and off if I want. This one here is my onion skinning, which you'll see uh, in a moment. Okay, so that is my character combined into the one layer. I'm gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna call this one rough because I'm gonna do some scribbles to explain some stuff. So I'm now drawing on our rough layer. And I just wanna do a little bit of a timing chart just to show you what I'm going for. Okay, so we've got our um, draw tool selected. Um, actually, let's choose my black material. Whoops, black. Here's our first frame. And here is our uh, the frame where we're gonna land on the ground. And it's gonna bounce down here, right? So here is frame one. And I'm gonna say it's gonna hit the ground on frame eight. And now we're gonna work backwards from there. So we're gonna say frame seven is gonna be somewhere in the middle, right? Frame six, somewhere in between the middle for that. Frame five, let's go the middle again. Frame four, let's go halfway. So let's just you know, do it roughly in there. Frame three, halfway, and then frame two, really, really close to the top up there. So that's the rough idea that we're going to go for. Um, and I'll just, I'll just leave this here so we can kind of have a visual guide as we do our animation. And now I wanna jump back to our character layer. Now we could draw the same ball on every frame or we can let the computer do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So that's what I'm gonna choose. So with our layer here, I'm going to jump into edit mode again. I'm gonna select all of our um, points and, and, and edit them. Although you can see that our uh, rough layer here has also been selected. So a way to uh, disable this is just to go over here and choose auto lock inactive layers. So that means that it's not gonna be able to select anything uh, other than the layer that you're working on. See how this um, little lock layer there, um, the, the padlock comes on and off. That's really handy when you're doing stuff like this. Okay, so this is the position on frame one. This is where I want the ball to be. And then on frame eight, so let's just scrub down here to frame eight. I can use the arrow keys left and right, or I can just scrub with the, uh, the left mouse click. I'm going to position it on the ground. So I'm gonna hit G in our viewport, or we could bring up our, um, our gizmo. So let's just um, bring up the tilde key and choose our move gizmo. And then you can see we've got some handles. So I'm gonna just drag it down to the ground, actually close to the ground, because I'm gonna do some more editing. And this is automatically, you can see it's added a keyframe on that character. So if I scrub now, you'll see that it is jumping back and forth. But I haven't finished I haven't quite finished with this um, frame here. I'm gonna add some squash and stretch and to try and maintain the volume here. So let's change this to our uh, scale tool. And then we're just gonna scale it on the X axis, or the Z axis, sorry, and then shrink it down on the X axis just to maintain that volume. And you can see I'm poking through the ground. So let's just go back to our move tool and drag it up a little bit. So it's just touching the ground. So there we go. So that is our two frames here, bum, bum. And now we're gonna let the computer uh, do the interpolation between these two frames, right? But our spacing isn't gonna be correct, but we're gonna fix that later. So up here in interpolate, we have this little sequence button. So I'm gonna click that and you know, oh, oops, sorry, I got a little bit of an error there because we need to be in between two keyframes. So any frame in between there will do. And then we choose interpolate sequence and you'll see that we've filled in some frames here and they're, they're, they're a blue color. So um, it's not the right spacing, but what it's done is it's interpolated the position as well as that squash and stretch that I that I wanted. And now I'm just going to fix our spacing, but um, we want to be able to see what we're what we're working on there. So we you notice that we've got the onion skinning from our start frame to our end frame, but it's not including any of these new frames. So over here in our data tab, still we've actually got our filter by type in on the onion skinning, and we're going to choose all types. And now you can see ah, it's going to show us all the frames. Then we're just gonna ramp up how many frames it's going to show us before. Uh, we only need seven, so we get um, all the frames. And then afterwards, we choose, um, uh, uh, well, I chose eight, but seven will do. That's gonna show us all the frames there. So it's only gonna show us when we're, um, uh, when we're not scrubbing. It's gonna hide it when we scrub, and then when we're still, it's gonna show us all the frames there. Okay, so now we're gonna fix each one of these spacing. So we're gonna go to frame two. I'm gonna zoom in here, and remember we wanted to get it really tight at the top. So I'm gonna select all our frames, and then just drag it up. I'm using our onion skinning. I want it to be super, super close, but not, um, not right over the top. So that's what I want. That, that'll do. We're really, really close, but not um, just moving down slightly. Then we go to frame three, and let's select them all with the A key, and then drag it up. Again, we want it to be super close, but not a, li a little bit of a bigger gap. 
that's good. Let's go to the next frame, select all of our points with the A key slightly bigger. So remember, we're on frame four, so it should be, the middle of our ball should be about there. So we're, we're staying true to our timing chart, selecting everything there, dragging it back up. We're on frame five, so we should be getting slightly bigger. That's, uh, that's probably a little bit too much. Let's go to frame six, select everything, drag it up, should be around here. Getting bigger now, that's probably a little bit too much of a gap. There we go, now frame seven. We want this one to be about halfway and let's drag it up. There we go. All right, so now you'll see that if we play our animation, uh, for you, it might just be spacebar, but because I've changed that to the tools, it is shift spacebar for me. And you can see our ball falls. So let's just um, copy these frames and make it go back up. So I'm going to, whoops, select everything with the box select. So just hit B, select all of our keyframes here on our character layer. I'm going to duplicate them with Shift D. Just drag them over here. Uh, that will be anywhere is fine, like because we're going to move them back into the right position. So these are still selected. I'm going to scale them around my playhead. So I'm putting the playhead on the last frame here. So I'm going to hit S X negative one and then hit Enter. And what I've done is I've flipped the order of those frames. And now I'm going to drag them back. And I don't want to drag them over the top of this one. I'm going to leave one frame of a gap and then we're gonna paste these ones on frame 10. So let's just grab them with the G key, move them back. And you can see now we're gonna go down, we're gonna hold a couple frames on the stretch and then we're gonna go back up. And now I wanna end my animation on frame 18. So I can type in end here. Um, I said 18, but I meant 17. So type in 17 or I can just hit control end in our uh, timeline here and that's going to end our animation there. Okay, so now this frame here, I'm gonna give it a squash and push it down on the ground. So uh, you, you'll notice that there's a gap here. If I edit our strokes here, it's actually going to automatically create a keyframe for us, which is, which is what we want. So I'm gonna select all of our points here, and then I'm going to uh, make sure that I'm in, um, actually, I'll, I'll do this in edit mode. So let's get our scale gizmo back here. So let's hit tilde and then scale. I'm gonna squash it down. Uh, a little bit flatter than the, than, a, um, than the round, but then preserve the volume by going a little bit wider, not too wide. And now let's just move it down to the ground again. So let's go move, position is down here, right on the ground. And now let's just scrub our animation to see how we've gone. I think I've actually squashed it vertically too much. So let's just go back to, whoops, tilde, choose our scale, and let's just remove that a little bit let's uh just shrink it down and now let's um just choose all of all of our gizmos there and i think that's more like what we want okay so jump back to object mode well actually draw mode will be easier to view this and let's play our animation just to give it uh, a once over yep that's not that's about right that that squash I'm, I'm happy with that squash so now we can actually add as a, as a bonus little thing here we're going to add a shadow under this so I'm going to jump to the top view with numpad 7. If you don't have a numpad, just click the Z up here and that'll take you to the top view. And now I'm in the top view and I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to do that over here in our data tab. I'm going to create a layer and hit plus. Let's call it shadow. Uh, shadow. And uh, I, it doesn't matter if it's if it's above or below for, for this example, but because we usually want our shadow to be below, I'm going to move it down so it, it is below. And then I'm going to draw a, a shadow shape on our ground here, but I, want, I don't want it to stick at the origin point. I'm going to stick it to the surface point here. And then we get a little bit of an offset, so I'm going to type in 0 0.001. So that means when I uh, draw my stroke here, it's going to sit slightly above the surface of our um, uh, ground plane, and it's going to be visible in, in the viewport. All right, so now let's get our circle active, and we're drawing with our pen tool, that's what we want. We're drawing on our shadow layer, and let's uh, draw this circle here. I'm just gonna get rid of my gizmo because it's gonna be in the way, so let's just click that one there, and it's disabled them. And now let's just draw a circle. Oh, actually, before I draw my shadow, let's uh, create a material for it. So we've already got one down here called gray. I'm gonna change this one to be called shadow, and let's turn off the stroke and make our fill we're gonna make it pure black, but let's lower the opacity to say 0.6 or 60%. 
All right, now we're ready to draw our circle. It's going to draw on our surface here. Um, and let's just go about the width of our um, character there. And you're gonna hit G and position it roughly about where I want it. So that is our stroke there. Now I'm gonna confirm with the uh, Enter key and then jump to the camera view with the numpad zero. And you can see, oh, okay, we're a little bit big, but let's fix that. So let's jump into edit mode. I'm gonna select our stroke here, and then I'm going to scale it. So let's go um, scale and just shrink it down a little bit. And it's a little bit skewed to the screen, right? So I'm gonna hit G to move it and then uh, constrain it to the X axis, just to position it under here. And I still think that's a little bit big. So let's just scale it down to about that. Okay, so that, that is looking good. Let's go to one frame before and let's shrink it down again. So let's just scale this kind of down to the right width. And let's go one frame before that. We're even gonna scale it down a little bit. So our shadow is starting to appear as, the, um, as, the, as it gets closer to the ground. So there we go. So that's what it's doing. So that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna do our little trick again. I'm gonna select these keyframes, drag them over here and flip the order. So with these three selected, I'm gonna hit S, X, negative one. That has flipped the order. Now I wanna drag them back and I do want them to be over the same frame here. So that's, that's okay, because now that's the right order. And just as a final little touch, I'm gonna animate our uh, opacity. So in two frames before here, I want it to be invisible, and then we want it to appear. So I'm gonna keyframe our opacity. That, that is what this uh, figure here is. So hovering over here, I'm gonna hit the I key. And now we've added a keyframe to our opacity. Let's go two frames before, let's drag it down to zero and keyframe that as well. Now, I think there's a little bit of a bug because everything has disappeared. I'm just gonna make sure I turn on the onion skinning and that's gonna uh, fix that. So I'll make sure that I report that bug. Anyway, so that is our shadow appearing. And then I'm gonna do the same thing in reverse. So on the last frame here, we want it to keyframe it at opacity 100%. So let's hit I and let's go two frames later and drag it down to zero and then hit I to make sure that we keyframe that. All right, so I think we, our animation is done. I am ready to get rid of our uh, rough layer. I'm just gonna select that keyframe here and hit X to delete it. Now that is all gone. And let's turn off our onion skinning and play our animation. So that'll probably be spacebar for you or shift spacebar for me. So there we have it, a bouncing ball done with grease pencil. That wasn't too hard, was it? Hopefully you guys learned something and had a lot of fun. Um, my name is Wayne Dixon. This has been uh, a tutorial, a free tutorial for you for cgcookie.com. If you want to learn more, please head on over to CG Cookie and learn more about Blender and other stuff like 3D modeling, animation, everything over there. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching and please stay safe. See ya.